Hi. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're okay. And thank you very much for Miga, Firestalk, and Nervous Hawk for the art there. You guys are fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, just one moment, sorry. Just minimizing that. Okay. Is it showing? There we go. So, good evening and welcome. I hope you're all having a nice, a nice Friday and welcome to your weekend. Normally it would be armor this evening, but it seems that on the conclusion of Mike Force, which is the name of the mod that we're playing, we're going to be doing one big final farewell game tomorrow evening. Uh, so fairly early on in the evening, presumably because it's going to take quite some time. So that should be fun. Uh, but yes, the Vietnam expansion pack comes to a close, and we've almost gone through all of the zones on the map. If not already, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do. Anyway, um, so, as for today, I'm mostly taking the week off to just relax before I get on with the next bullshittery starting next Monday, which is going to be Divinity Original Sin Bullshittery Part 3, a project that I, that I would really like to progress um, as quickly as I can, because I think it's one of those projects that will only be complete once, uh, only work well when all the pieces are together. Uh, being a story-driven one, it's not the sort of bullshittery where you can just take clips in isolation and they're still relatively funny, you know, um, regardless of when they were recorded, within reason. So yes, uh, that's what's going on at the minute. I've had quite a chill day today. Um, yeah, did a bit of cleaning, mostly worked on an After Effects project as a favour. Um, yeah, so all's good really, all's good. Right, so... Welcome indeed, everyone. Uh, for those not familiar with Outer Wilds, or Outer Wilds even, hey. welcome to it. So, it is a story-driven mystery type game that's quite similar... Well, the best way I can, I can contextualize it would be to say the aesthetics of Oddworld, so Abe's Odyssey, meets a sort of little big adventure too, and maybe a dollop of Kerbal Space Program. Regardless, it's a first-person exploration story type game, which also is quite similar to Subnautica in many ways. I know it's a bit of a mishmash of themes that I just put together there. It's a very interesting game, full of soul, I'll tell you that. I am a little bit, I am goats, yeah. I'm very impressed uh, so far. I've been very impressed with everything I've seen so far. Welcome to Outer Wilds. So, a quick recap on what's happened then. This is Slate, he's an engineer. He's part of the Harthian race that live here on Timber Hearth, this forested world that we all come from, well, we all come from this village here. So yeah, there's Mika over there with the toy robot, toy ship even. But yeah, this is the village that we inhabit, all living in our log cabins and getting along. Effectively, the game is about a space program and launching a ship from that platform, from that hollowed out tree. I'm not the first astronaut to leave Timber Hearth. In fact, I'm like the seventh or the eighth astronaut. Oop. Which planet is that? Oh, it's just the tree. Hmm. So yes, uh, what's going on is that the space program that we're following here, the Outer Wilds Ventures space program, I presume Outer Wilds is the name given to space, um, its objective is to learn more about our solar system, which seems to be once inhabited by a strange race of aliens called Nomai. They're not like us. We have four eyes, as you can see. These are infant versions, hatchlings apparently, so I guess we come from eggs. Mm. Tephra and Galena. But yes, uh, we are exploring our solar system and we're coming into contact with a, an ancient alien race that has long since been rendered extinct. We don't know what rendered them extinct, we keep finding their bodies, like their skeletal remains, all over the place. They've got three eyes and seemingly have fur. And we keep finding their statues and their other pieces of technology. If anything, it's a kind of a negative thing in many ways, because our species has been horribly contaminated by their technology. So we're taking much of their technology and grafting it onto our, onto our own ships as we explore launch our own satellites and that sort of thing. This is a statue of one of the Nomai. Now what's strange is that this statue opened its eyes, which is something that they don't typically do. Most of these statues are just inert, I would assume. 
But this one opened its eyes and looked at me, and ever since it did, something strange has been happening. I keep seeing my entire life, or rather, my life up to, well, for that day, replay in front of me whenever I die. So whenever I get killed out there, I come back here, waking up on that campsite, looking up into the stars, seeing a bright flash and then a blue light travel away. You saw it moments after I just started the stream. Here's examples of the technology that we're taking. So no my language, no my ruins, of no my, yeah, so a no my itself. It's technology, so they've mastered lots of things, including anti-gravity and black hole travel, weirdly. Anyway. So, uh, what's going on in this game is trying to figure out what happened to the Nomai, but also more specifically, something weird is happening with our star. It keeps exploding. Every 20 minutes or so, the star will explode and kill us and everything in the solar system, and then we wake up again. The game is basically Groundhog Day. We're stuck in a time loop, an endless time loop, and we're only aware of it because that statue is resetting my memories. All of these other people are completely unaware. Now, I did have one concern, which I was thinking about throughout the day. Hmm. So you see those rubble piles up in space there? So basically, we're stuck in a time loop, and our star keeps going Nova on us. And whenever it goes Nova, it does an effect which is not too dissimilar from what you're seeing there. I'm starting to wonder exactly how long we've been in this time loop. Because we keep finding ruins of the Nomai, but presumably those ruins are also stuck in that time loop. I've got a horrible feeling we might have been in this time loop for a very, very long time. Anyway. So, uh, there's more to it than that. We've learned a lot more over the, uh, well, over the last few streams. So, the Nomai were developing those statues to let people become aware of any instances where they die. Three of the statues seem to be activated because the statues linked to a series of masks which are being kept, are basically a sort of memory storage device which is being kept at a place, a place called Ash Twins, part of a project called the Ash Twins Project. Three of the masks were enabled, one for me, one for Gabbro, who was another Hearthian and accidentally activated one of the statues, and then a third one that I don't know about. In addition, we've discovered other things that the Nomai were doing. They came here on something that they called the Vessel, which is some sort of warp-capable ship which entered the solar system following a signal that they called the Eye of the Universe. What it is is not yet clear, but they keep finding that its signal is weird and they keep trying to lock it down. They've built two big observatories to try and track its signal and both have failed. It seems to be zipping around left, right and centre all over the place at an extremely far orbit away from this solar system. So it's here, whatever the eye of the universe is, but we can't, they, well, they couldn't find it. Every time we wake up, the probe that we think they built to find it launches and when it does, it destroys the platform that the Namai built. We go there, it's just debris, we just find it circling uh, the planet of Giant's Deep. So, I'm starting to wonder if perhaps the time loop is on purpose. If perhaps it's their attempt to find this mysterious eye, one loop at a time, convinced that maybe one time they'll find it, maybe. Because the probe keeps going in different directions, and if what I read was true on one of their technical manuals, Someone said, uh, sorry, someone called Yarrow reported that the power source was, something was wrong with it. So maybe they could only launch the probe once and the time loop is intentional. Maybe. Yeah, can you see, the, this makes me very concerned. If those are really stars going Nova, are we really trapped in a time loop for potentially millions of years? Or is that just an aesthetic? I don't know. But that looks a lot like our own star going Nova. Hmm. Anyway, so I'm going to be heading over to the Ash Twins to try and investigate more. They built some... Ooh, that's Eska whistling on the moon. <laughs> and behind it is... Uh, that's um, Gabbro on Giant's Deep. 
Let's get aboard. Anyway, so I'm going to be going over to the planet of the Hourglass Twins, which appear to be two planets that are linked together. One appears to be sending material to some sort of, well, two huge towers that are on the other one. I've not been there yet, so um, hmm, we'll try and have a look. Also, I'm running out of time. Me waffling on and on. Anyway, let's go. Hydrogen jet initiated. Of course, the Harthians all think that this is my first ever launch. They don't know that we're in a Groundhog Day situation. Okay. So. Let's switch on my Outer Wilds Ventures. Some sort of space programs. There we go. Tracker. So, drums. Match speed to Ember Twin. Engage autopilot. Here we go. So, we're hopefully going to meet someone called Chert. Chert is the passive-aggressive Harthian that keeps leaving notes telling people to stop reading his notes. Or, like, don't touch this, this is Chert's. So, many astronauts have been launched before me. Ooh. Okay. So I presume we're looking at the Ash Twin project. Ooh. So one of the planets has been entirely hollowed. Look, all the way to its core. Okay. We should find Chert. He's on the south pole of this one. Oh, wow. What is that that's coming from the other planet there? Can I turn the vessel? Bring up the landing. Okay. What the fuck? Is that some sort of liquid that's being pulled from it? Okay. It's very missed, uh, says Agarob. I keep saying Little Big Adventure. It's all very colourful, but uh, big and grand, and grand, isn't it? Okay, let's find Church. See what he has to say. I don't have too long before that star goes nova. Sorry, just reinitialize. Chert, Chert, where is Chert? Oh, I see his ship. Okay, let's go land by his ship and then follow the handheld version of the same device that I've got. <laughs> Landing engaged, unbuckling, don't forget my suit. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the Hourglass Twins. Chert, where are you? You're over there, 121 meters away. Good lord. How's my jetpack in this gravity? Eh, pretty effective. Very effective. Okay. Uh, yes, chat. Apologies if I... Yeah, I, I'm continually asking rhetorical questions for the sake of narration. To explain what exactly I'm thinking, I'm not looking for the answer to those questions. Also, one of the escape pods of the Nomai crashed here when their vessel encountered difficulties. So, we can probably find it on its surface. Chert, where are you? This way. My jetpack is very effective. Unidentified signal nearby. He seems to be over there. Yeah. Okay. You think I can make it? Probably. What happens if I don't? I don't have too long to... There we go. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. Signal identified. Chert. <laughs> Hello, Chert. Oh, it's you. I take it it's your first launch. Well then, welcome to the Hourglass Twins. Mind the sand now. <sighs> what are you up to? Hornfell noticed our star charts are out of date, so I came out here to update them. But something seems 
how to put this, off. I've seen, what, 10 supernovae by now? 12? They're in the double digits now, and that's, you know, not normal. Not normal at all. Oh, am I right? Holy shit, did, what, as in he's looking at the stars. Fuck, did I put two and two together and get it right? So stars are going supernova way more than they should be. Oh, that's so bad. That's so fucking bad. How long have we been in the time loop? Millions of years? It depends on the star, but it does take that long to go supernova. Oh, that's really, really bad. Okay. Um, why are so many stars going supernova? I have no idea. Massive stars go supernova when they reach the end of their lifespan, so it's possible that the stars are older than we realised. Or maybe our models are wrong, and they don't live as long as we expected. Honestly, I'm not fond of either option. If our charts are wrong, what else is wrong? And our sun? No, oh, I shouldn't jump to conclusions. I'm probably overlooking something, that's it. I just need to collect more data. Was there something else you needed? What are you doing here? Well, I, I was... That is, I originally came out here to update our star charts. Now, though, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the stars. There are so many, too many supernova. Why are so many stars dying out? I've never seen anything like this. Frankly, I'm worried and a little scared. Mm. Um, how dangerous is that big column of falling sand? On a scale of 1 to dead, I give it a 7 or an 8. Awfully pretty, though. Right now, sand is flowing from Ash Twin to Ember Twin. But I, uh, but did you know the process eventually reverses? We're not completely sure why the sand flows back and forth between the twins, but it seems to be a natural phenomenon. Does it? Have you not noticed the huge Nomai Towers on Ash Twin? Oh, if you'd like to see something interesting, check out the other twin once a little more of its sand drains off. I promise, you won't be disappointed. Was there something else you need? Okay. Where should I explore here? To be honest, I haven't left this lake bed. I don't mean to brag, but I'm really quite good with my little scout, so I've been taking pictures of everything from right here in my campsite. Have you seen the old shipwreck site on Ember Twin's southern hemisphere? The one shooting the bright beam of light into the sky? It's not one of our own crashes, surprisingly enough. This one's a Nomai ship. You'll find Nomai ruins across the Twins. But strangely, not a single settlement. Believe me, if there was one to see, I would have seen it with my little, little scouts. So where did they live? Not on the surface, clearly. Ember Twin is full of cave systems, though. Maybe an answer lies underground. Was there something else you needed? I found something. Ooh, do tell. I found your note about the, Atle about the Atle Rock's main crater. Did you? I hope they were useful. The planet I mentioned may have been frozen solid or just partially made of ice, like a much colder giant steep. It's hard to say. It used to be uh, the fifth planet in our solar system. You'll notice, of course, that there's no such planet now. It's in, a, uh, it's in its place is Dark Bramble, which, how to put this, grew into the space the fifth planet used to occupy. Hmm. That is, Dark Bramble quite literally appeared at the centre of the fifth planet and began destroying it from the inside out. Oh. Eventually the planet shattered, com the, the planet shattered completely and its shards were flung across space. Some of those shards collided with the celestial bodies in our solar system, such as the Atle Rock, which I believe is how its biggest crater was formed. Oh, okay. So that's thrown one of my, uh, one of my theories in the bin. I thought those, those icy rock things were a piece of the containment, well, I assumed, maybe a containment system. Um, apparently the Namaya were building some sort of barrier here at the Twins, using ore that they were taking from Timber Hearth. I guess not. So it was another planet that was destroyed. Oh god, it's about to go. Okay. Wait a minute. This wasn't full of sand a minute ago. Oh wow, is it rising? How cool is that? Hang on. Oh god. So he doesn't know. He couldn't have been one of them. Yeah, he hasn't interfaced with any of the masks. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, we're so close to the sun, I could probably just cook it by <laughs> pointing at the sun. Can I walk on this or? I can. How cool. Is it going up? It is, look. I see. So sand is being transferred over here from the other one. Okay. So this is ember and that's ash. Ooh. I see. He's monitoring the stars. Not from here, you won't. Okay. I don't have long. The star's about to go any second now. So I was right. I was right about the stars that I saw in the sky. You'll see it momentarily. When our own star goes supernova, you'll see the effect that's also out in space. The little rocks. Well, they're not rocks, but little pieces of the star. So in the, in the star's final stages, when it starts producing iron and that starts robbing it of the necessary energy, uh, the battle between, well, the nuclear reaction and gravity starts becoming lopsided and gravity starts winning. And all of this mass will collapse down, in, well, almost instantaneously, rather at a significant fraction of the speed of light, down onto the core. And then everything that, well, basically you hit a hard barrier you hit a very, very strict barrier where the core cannot be compressed any further, at which point all of that mass blasts outwards, a supernova. So you're about to see all of the, well, the elements of the star propelled outwards. The bigger the star, the faster this process, in fact. So early stars, when our universe was first created, went through their fuel really quickly and exploded, and then made new stars. The smaller star, there we go, watch, watch, watch. So gravity wins, it all falls down, and then when it hits the core, it can go no further, but out. At this point, rare elements are being created. Supernova fusion? Supernova forging? I can't remember its name. But it's so hot that it's creating brand new elements that have never existed before. At least, you know, just shortly after the Big Bang. So this would happen again and again and again for billions, well, yeah, billions of years until finally the galaxy, well, the universe became what it is now. So the old saying, we are all star stuff. Yeah, basically. We live only by the death of these stars. Wake up. The time loop resets. The probe is launched, some sort of unknown Nomai probe. The wreckage of the cannon falls around the into orbit around uh, Giant's Deep. Again, I'm theorizing that that probe is being launched in a random direction every time, I'm guessing, if the time loop is intentional, if it is. If the Nomai set that up, then giving them infinite time in a time loop would give them, well, eventually they'd find it, and then someone would break the loop, right? Maybe they never lived to break the loop. Or maybe they just fucked up and got trapped. I don't know. Okay. Back to the Ember Twins. Here we go. Off we go. So, yeah. So the star blasts its guts out into the universe, creating huge clouds of debris. One second, slow down. I forgot the correct twin. Yeah, we'll land there again. Ooh, what's that? There's something else in orbit. You see that thing? Ooh, hang on a second. So because the middle bit isn't full of sand, I can see all the way in. Let's have a quick look while we're here. Oh, shh. Wow. They mined the entire core? Did they? Jeez. 
Jesus Christ. Ooh, is that a bridge into a Namai settlement, maybe? Were they just underground? So I know that the Ash Twins project, whatever it was, fuck. Whatever it was, they built some sort of protective barrier around it and sealed all the entrances for reasons that I don't know yet. It's another launch site. We found one of these on Brittle Hollow. It launched a ship up towards the Quantum Moon. I think they were trying to use the Quantum Moon as a way of fast travelling between... What's that? Oh! That's the Quantum Moon, look. So that is a moon that changes its position based on when it's being observed. No, it's not. Sorry, I'm talking bullshit. That's the other twin. My mistake. I thought it was the Quantum Moon. Here it comes. Ooh, I see. So as one as one moon is buried, the secrets of another are revealed. Okay, hang on. So one thing at a time. So that symbol, I've seen this before. That's the eye of the universe. I saw this in the chapel. The chapel in the school district, I think? Or the 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 whatever it was district at Brittle Hollow. So this is definitely a settlement of the Namai. We just need to find our way in. Okay. Let's land somewhere. Hmm. Let's... Ah, I know what we can do. I know exactly where we'll start. We'll start where the Namai started. Switch over to frequency, distress beacon. Where did their distress beacon land? Where did they crash? When their vessel encountered difficulties? Stand by. Distress beacon detected. 172 meters. Here it is. Just like Brittle Hollow. So when their vessel entered the system, they were attacked by something. Something thorny. Stand by. Alright. There it is. That's their distress beacon. Signal identified. Escape pod 2. Escape pod 3 did not successfully escape... The world of Dark Bramble. Okay. So I theorise that these were perhaps cryopods? I figured that these ones were still occupied, but I guess they're empty. One by one, the crew dismounted via this rotating system, I think. What does this say? Anona. We need status reports for all systems, but initial things first. Is everyone unharmed? Russ. I've not seen Russ before. Our escape pod's passengers are, are afraid, but physically well. Anona. Everyone survived the crash. One second. Who's Anona? Malo Kasava Arvins Kunal. I've seen Anona mentioned, but I don't know what her rank and her role is. Okay. So, everyone survived the crash. Anona, this is a relief, at least. You have my gratitude. Burr, were you able to find the other escape pod's distress signals? Burr, I can hear both signals somewhere in this star system, but I don't believe either escape pod crashed on the same planet as us. So one landed on Brittle Hollow. The other one is presumably still tangled up in Dark Bramble. guidance computer the last one at dark bramble sorry at uh, brittle hollow identified favorable conditions outside what about this one launching escape pod 3 now launching escape pod 2 alert collision imminent prepare for impact scanning external environment scan complete external temperature is prohibit prohibitively high verdict inhospitable do not seek shelter on the planet's surface. Begin flight log escape pod 2. Vessel has been mortally injured. Emergency sequence activated. Awaiting departure from the vessel. Sorry, that was the first line. Hmm. What's that sound? Something rumbled. Melloray. The heat from this star system's sun is more bearable below the surface. Melloray. 
When our escape pod punctured this planet's surface, it broke into what scans show is a cave system with much cooler air. I would recommend we seek a site down there to build a long-term shelter. Anona. Uh, sorry, Anona. But these passengers, uh, passengers, uh, sorry, passages are a maze. Anona. Even with this danger, they are still our best chance for survival. We'll for form teams and descend into the cave to look for a shelter site. We can mark our findings on the walls to avoid becoming irreversibly lost. Be cautious, everyone. And be aware of the sand as you search. It appears to be rising gradually. Oh. So it was like this when they arrived? It is naturally occurring. It's not part of the Ash Twins project. Okay. Emergency escape hatch. They triggered this one. Okay. Melloray. Uh, we have found an enormous cavern at the end of this passage that appears promising. I believe we could construct long-term shelters there. The cavern Melloray found is a wise choice for shelter. Could one of you mark, could one of you mark the direction for the others to follow? Collius. This is the start of the path to the shelter site. I've left directions to guide you there. Of note, we must hurry, as the pathway there is filling with sand. Do not allow yourself to be buried by sand and make sure no one is lost. Okay. Um, I don't know, Small. I, I'm just experiencing this for the first time. Yeah, the game is full of sort of creativity and soul. It's very cool. Hmm. I see cactus over there as well. They might injure me. Best be careful. The path to the shelter site is somewhat convoluted, so follow the instructions ahead carefully. Oh, thank you, General Tomcat. Thank you sincerely. Thank you for your generosity. Sorry, wait. General Tomat, even. Not Tomcat. Sorry. Thank you, General Tom Tomat. Sorry, I'm missing all the subs. Thank you, folks. You're very you're very kind. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sort of... Uh, if you'll forgive me at the same time, I'm also intentionally not looking to my left. For spoilers. Sorry. So apologies if I seem super immersed. To reach the shelter site, walk forward until you meet the sand fall at the pit and then turn left. Continue to the room filled with rock column formations and climb upwards through the opening above them. The sand here is rising, so you must be um, so you must be cautious but swift. I've already forgotten. What did he say? Go this way and then the pillar of sand and then up past the rock falls Ooh. stalagmites stalactites chat do you remember which one is which i'm testing you now which one's a stalactite and which one's a stalagmite hmm? well done well done yes tights go down mites go up saucy Did you get lost already? Hang on. Three minutes of oxygen remaining. That's concerning. We've got time. We've got time. Look for... Fuck ass. This way? No, I... What the fucking hell? Let me 
read the instructions again. To reach the shelter site, walk forward until you meet the sandfall at the pit, then turn left. Continue, continue to the room filled with rock column formations and climb upwards through the opening above them. There's meant to be an opening above them, okay. I knew that. Opening above them. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew that. I do hope there's oxygen up ahead. Be cautious crossing the chasm ahead. The bridge Melorai and I crafted will do its job. Well done. Once on the far side, look for a tunnel hidden beneath beneath falling sand. Follow it and you'll reach the shelter sites. Yep. Ah. Oxygen? Nope, just spikiness. You're doing well. There's only a little farther ahead now until you reach the shelter site. You can rest there. Hurry, before the sand comes. Oh shit, the bed. Your skill. Oh god. Ah, okay. I'm gonna run out of oxygen. I really hope there's. Okay. Is there air in here? Ah, yes. Okay. 60 seconds remaining. One minute. Okay. We're here. So, the Nomai at Brittle Hollow constructed a huge hanging city. What did these ones build? Another, another control system, similar to the one that I saw at the observatory. Hmm. Again, they died here. More of these thorns. Are these relevant, or...? It's one of the mysteries. They all just died where they stood. No burial, no signs of panic, no, scram no scrambling for the door. Children died with toys in their, ha in their hands. Damn, the sand is ri rising here as well. Anglerfish Overlook District. Stepping Stone District. High Energy Lab. That's what I need to look at. Eye Shrine District. Doors? Oh. Lights. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. That's not good. Seems I've only got a short amount of time before the whole place is buried. Okay. I don't know why everyone says the eye is important. They say it brought us to this solar system, but is that good? Dad told me lots of Namai died when our clan came here. What if the eye wanted that to happen? What if the eye isn't something good? Oh. Oh. Are these the storage devices? The masks. Could these be the storage devices that they've got in the center of the uh, Ash Twin project? There could be the memories of a Nomai in there, maybe. Depends if they're linked to a statue. Two. Two beds. Maybe? A while ago, I perhaps theorized that since the signal from the eye came from before the universe, apparently, that perhaps it was an attempt at life exten extension. Maybe they transferred their minds over to the Ash Twin project in order to ride out the next Big Bang, maybe. If that's true, then that would explain the time loop. Speed things up a bit, I guess. One second. Fuck, I'm running out of time. I'll be okay. Up. That would also explain why they're trying to seal themselves away. I don't 
don't know. Child. Matter detected. Just don't run into it. Damn it. It's in the floor. Beneath the floor. Fuck. Don't have long. No time. There's no time. Oh, shit. Don't get buried. This is claustrophobic. Be welcomed into this place. The shrine is a space to reflect on what brought us to this star system. We observed the ice signal in our travels and followed it here. What we know is this. The source of the signal, which we've chosen to call the eye, is older than the universe itself. Enter your mind to the possibilities. If the eye called to us, why won't it reveal itself? Why is it so difficult to locate it? Did something happen to it? Did the signal stop? Does the eye no longer desire to be found? Perhaps this isn't the eye's choice. The eye may not be able to communicate with us more than it already has. We're inside the shrine itself. Is the eye natural or artificial? Maybe someone built it. The eye is older than the universe itself. How could something exist before its creation? It could be naturally occurring, though this doesn't answer how the eye could be as old as it is. Did the eye deliberately call out to us by sending the signal, or did we hear the signal by coincidence? Perhaps the eye wanted to be found. Could it be sentient? Maybe it chose us. Does the eye desire something from us? Could it need us in some way? Maybe it doesn't have to be us. We could be seeing meaning where there is none. Suppose the signal was produced incidentally. Does that mean the eye is less important though? pinned their entire clan's hopes on it, and they had no idea what it was. These were migrating species, moving from star system to star system. I think the sand may have stopped. It's no longer making noise. No, it's not. I just moved too far away. It is still making noise, and I believe I may be trapped. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nope. I'm alright. I'm alright. I'm alright. Uh, panic? Calm? Panic? I don't want to suffocate. Thank you. Okay. Shit. Wait, where am I? I thought this was the escape. Is this not the escape route? It is. We're fine. Ooh. Okay, hang on. Ah, there's a way in. Okay. Oh, shit. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. Okay. Come to the cannon next time. We'll avoid the rest of it. Okay. Straight down that shape. Whew. So yes, this nomadic species came here and just gave up moving around. They started converting their technology into, well, probe launching and whatever the Ash Twin project is. Many mysteries. So the sand is naturally occurring? They built their city, they built their shelter in a place where the sand keeps building up? Seems a bit silly. Then again, they didn't have a choice, they couldn't leave. It's only when they uh, they were able to link up with the others. Apparently, they utilised the quantum moon to jump from place to place. Shit. Broken. That's my ship when it landed. That's the escape pod. OK. 
Okay. Is that the limit then? Is, is this the point where it recedes? Here we go. Oop. Hmm. So yeah, look. One of the two towers that they built, taking ore from Timber Half. Channeling something? Central pillar giant fins. It's not facing the sun, so it doesn't look like it's a solar array. There's a building there. So the pouring sand is not part of it? Oh look, all of these structures have been revealed. So we can only explore that world just at the tail end of each cycle. What is the Ash Twin project? And we're looking for some sort of shell. Some dense uh, dense shell that they built around something to make sure that it had no gaps in it. Oh wow, hang on. Is the ship being consumed as well? We're fine, aren't we? could explore it now. I probably don't have the time. The star's about to go any second. Go. Quickly. Okay, so next time when we get back, we'll come straight back to the cannon. Match velocity? Let's get a look at it at the very least. So what is this? Is this the Ash Twin project? Oh! Look, 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 look. Is that the shell? This thing here? The ore that they mined? The protective layer. Got a hunch. No quantum fluctuations. It only goes up. All the way to the top. Okay, so almost everything everything down there is buried in sand, at which point it reverses. Shame I don't have any marshmallows. <laughs> no, Chert said it reverses, apparently. It's a natural process that keeps going back and forth. Here we go. Not that uh, we have time for it. rather the mask restores our memories. We'll get back as quickly as we can. So this separate group of Nomai that found that found their way to the Ash Twins. I wonder at what point they started working on their projects. And for what purpose. Wake up. Explosion. Blue lights, off in that direction this time. Every loop, a different direction.
let's go. How many cycles are, uh, cycles are we in? I don't know, that's the mystery. We could have been doing this for a very, very long time. And not, because the word doesn't really apply, does it? Stand by. Where are the Ember Twins? And what is that? There's a separate structure there, moving around the sun. There they are. Lock on. Match velocity with this Ember Twin and engage autopilot. So, for those just joining the stream, you're looking at the first adventures of a, of a, of a young Harthian, so from Timber Hearth, as he explores space, the first one to be equipped with a translator that's able to read the ruins of the Nomai, the ancient alien species that went extinct in this solar system. But now that we're up here, we're discovering that things are a lot more dire than it seems. For we appear to be stuck in a time loop of some description. Groundhog Day style. Whoa! Hey, Chet. Alright. The star keeps exploding every 20 minutes or so. Boom. And the only reason we're aware of that is because we accidentally fumbled with some technology that seems to be preserving our memories. The Namai built it. I can't remember exactly what they said. They built it in case something went wrong? Here we go. Right. Stand by. Whoops. Didn't mean to press that. Ooh, it's uh, a lot of cactuses there. Touch that, that'll kill me. Uh, can I get through there safely? Whoa! Oh! Oh, no, 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 no. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie! Ow! My suit! I'm okay. Pat suit. Ow, 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 ow! Pat suit! <laughs> I'm fine! That's cool, the fact that you gotta apply fixes to punctures. The game is really detailed, I like it. Okay, we're back. Right, so we went... Yeah, so there are two entrances now. So one on the other side. Let's quickly top up on oxygen while we're here. And slap on the lights. Okay, so we've been into what I presume was the chapel. Should we build the sun station to power the Ash Twin project? Sun station. Yarrow. Are there other ways to generate this level of power? Theoretically, yes, says Pi. Practically, no. I can't imagine discovering them in our lifetimes. Rami, I understand this proposal is unsettling, but the Sun Station must be built if we hope to complete the Ash Twin project. Idea. I almost can't comprehend this is being suggested seriously. The purpose of the Sun Station goes against every standard we hold ourselves to, and everything we believe in as a species. Unsurprisingly, idea, I disagree. We're pushing a possible new technology further than ever before. That, in my experience, is the defining characteristic of our species. If we fail, and the probability of this is not insignificant, we will, without question, destroy ourselves, all life here, and the rest of this star system. I wish to protect these species. The potential annihilation of an entire star system is too severe a cost. We shouldn't build the sun station no matter how badly we want the knowledge that comes with it. Fear of failure is a poor reason not to try. I believe, if we're cautious, the sun station will work. I believe in Pi. Poke, and deeply honoured. Idea, I comprehend your position. However, if we aren't all but certain the sun station will not cause destruction once we've built it, then I won't support the station's use. <sighs> I think we figured out why the star's exploding, eh? 
Oh. That's good. Maybe we can fix it. Maybe we can fix it. Okay. New objective. We break the time loop. We break the sun station. And figure out what the eye of the universe is. The eye, sh eye shrine we've already visited. Whoops. The high energy lab. Stepping Stone District, Angler Overlook District, Angler, sorry, Anglerfish? Anglerfish Overlook District. I think this is where I first came when I first arrived. Is it over here? Wow, look at that. We'll start lower then. What's that? Power coming up. We'll start lower while we have the time. Quickly. We don't have long at all. Damn, the high energy lab. I want to do that last because I think that's going to be quite pivotal to the story. Upsy daisy. This is it. Whoops. Yes. For those just joining, we're exploring the ruins of ancient aliens that died in this solar system. They look like they're responsible for the destruction of our sun. It better have been worth it, whatever the fuck they were doing. Their, their little project. Levi, we're meeting in the fossil fish cave to play the game. If you're too big to climb through the anglerfish overlook hole, you'll have to go the long way, but it isn't too far. Go to stepping stone cave and then up into the fossil fish cave. Tag it. I tried to get to the fossil fish through the stepping stone cave, but I couldn't find the entrance. Where is it? Remember to feed the fossil fish first. If you go to the anglerfish overlook and throw a light into his mouth, he'll show you the way. Taggett can't fit through the anglerfish overlook hole anymore because he grew bigger. He's taller than Levi now. Who cares? Ilex is still the tallest. Children talking to each other. Fuck, that one died. I'm trying to get through. Fuck, they were just killed instantly, these kids. be playing the fossil fish game tonight. I fed the fossil fish a new lantern. If you go to Stepping Stone Cave, the entrance to the fossil fish cave is easy to see now. Gratitude, Solanum. It's good you're small enough to climb through the hole at Anglerfish Overlook. I'm still small enough. You won't be for long. Mum and Dad are tall, so you and I will be tall too. Stone Overlook. So many dead kids, holy shit.
stepping stone cave. I don't have long. sand, is there? gonna jump at me Damn, I think I'm out of time it's filling up quickly Stepping stone cave. Explore what else we can while we're here. As quickly as we can. We're back through here. Bloody hell, it is a maze. They weren't kidding. This is amazing! Look inside the cave! How did this come to rest here? We haven't encountered others in these caves. I think this is a rare find. From what we can see, Collius, I believe this specimen may be very old indeed. Imagine what we might learn if we could examine it. We both agree it's unlikely this dry planet is this horror, uh, this horror place, sorry, is this horror's place of origin, especially considering what we observed during the vessel's evacuation. Oh fuck. <laughs> Sorry, for, for a minute there, I thought it was going to lunge at me. It's fine. It's dead. <laughs> oh, I just think it's scared you can't. I'm fine. Clearly this hole was too small for it to have fit through. Hypothesis, there's another entrance to this cave. If there is, Coleus and I will find it. We can't leave valuable information undiscovered. Uh, we both agree it's unlikely this right Yeah, hang on a minute. So what are we looking at there? Was this thing alive? Are they feeding it? What are they talking about? Replace feeding it. Hmm. I see. Look, through its jaws. Hmm, I see. This is the gap that they talked about, that they were too small to squeeze through. I 
missed the bottom left. We need to find a way inside quickly. Meloray, um, because when I returned here to search for an entrance to the cave, there were children playing in on the specimen. Oh, I see. So it was already dead. There were children playing on it. Oh. I think there were children playing on it when whatever cataclysm occurred. Occurred. And feeding it a light like I did. Yeah, what was that about? Huh. Uh oh. Okay. So just at the side of the entrance, anglerfish overlook. have to wait to the next loop. I see, the first entrance that I took. The gravity cannon. One minute. So next time we can get through this way. Presumably. Okay. We should meditate until next time. Unless there's something else I can learn on the other one before we go. Let's do that. Let's head to the other one. See what we can see what we can figure out. Ouch. Okay. Flying over to the other planet and seeing what we can see. Oh, that looks weird. Is that gonna cause a navigation problem? Look at that. Oh. Oh, shit. Wait. 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 I've never seen one of their suits. And it's wearing the mask. It's physically wearing its data storage device. They all wore them? All the time? One of their teleport systems, or maybe power source. If it's in line with Whitehall Station, maybe? The rest of it's decomposed inside the suit, no doubt, but I've never seen that. Where does this go? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is that going to be a problem? Ah. Uh. Are we going to get buried in sand? Or pulled, I suppose? Hang on. Try not 
to get pulled up into the core of the other planet. Here we go. Oh no, my ship. God damn, my ship just got lifted. Am I going to get lifted? Oh no, I'm standing on this grip floor. Okay. Damn it. Fuck. Piss. My ship's on the other planet now. Okay. I don't have long. Scroll. Friends visiting from the Hanging City, we are planning the Ash Twin project at the High Energy Lab on Ember Twin's equator. I became lost on Ember Twin, my gratitude that Rami found me, but the High Energy Lab is the building with the large solar panels. I'm surprised I didn't see it. I imagine our otherwise immensely clever Conoy would lose his own head if it weren't anatomically impossible. Conoy was... Connor was one of the helpers building the cannon back on Giant's Deep. Sand is coming. Hang on. Oh, the last of the sand. That's it. So the entire core has been exposed. Whatever shell they built here. Here we go. Side mounted gravity, where does it go? Quickly, 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 quickly. Here's our first delivery, Yarrow. One warp core, fresh from the Black Hole Forge. Root is installing this core sibling on Brittle Hollow as I write this. I wish I could wait for, uh, wait here for you to arrive, uh, but the forge and my unfinished work there is calling. I'll return with more material soon. My gratitude, Clary. With this, the Ash Twin project is underway. I confess I'm deeply curious about what you and Poke found on the Whitehall station that started this project. I knew it. Okay. Could I visit sometime to learn more? I recommend you do. The White Hole Station is the model for the towers being built for the Ash Twin project, so a visit to the station would be doubly useful. I suppose, more precisely, I would like to visit the White Hole Station with you, Clary. I'd be happy to explain our, explain our findings. Yarrow, stop using this scroll wall to flirt with my sister. 
In romantic matters, her density rivals a neutron star. And go meet her on the White Hole Station. <laughs> and then they fucked. Wake up. Okay. So what I suspected was the case is true. After they arrived at Brittle Hollow and they recreated their technology for black hole travel, which is what's in the core of Brittle Hollow, they figured out that their readings were correct. The wormhole was altering causality somehow. They were entering the black hole ever so slightly before they arrived. So. Oh, sorry, how does it work? Sorry, it was like a thousandth of a, th of a second, like, incorrect. So they exited the black hole before they arrived. Before they entered, whatever. Anyway, the point is, time travel. They figured out time travel. And then they started the Ash Twin Project. It's intentional, isn't it? Okay. So they also sent one of their most advanced warp cores. The manufacturing station at Brittle Hollow was reluctant to part with it, especially one of them in particular who thought that they should rebuild their vessel and, and, and leave. I have a horrible feeling those are neutron stars. Okay. Let's go. As quickly as we can. Straight back to the Ember Twins. Keep investigating the city there. So, if you're just joining us... I'm trying to unravel the mystery of what happened to this ancient alien race. All of the other members of my species, the Harthians, think this is my first trip into space. But we're stuck in a... No, don't you dare. No, 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 don't you... No, 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 no. Oh, shit, the bed. Uh, uh, can we... Don't you eat me. Oh, no, okay. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. If I get killed, I'm blaming fucking, um, fucking, what's his name, Slate for this. We're fine. See how fine we are? <laughs> okay. What was I saying? Anyway, so the rest of my species think this is, that this is my first trip into space, but we're doing a Groundhog Day. We're stuck in a time loop because we fiddled with some alien technology. There are three people stuck in the time loop. Myself, um, Gabbro, and someone else. It's not clear who that someone is. What's that? What is that? A model of the solar system? Seems to be. Interesting. Can you use it to determine when all of the planets are in alignment? I'm guessing so. One moment. No, I'm wasting time. I need to come back and look at this later. I need to get down quickly before the sand blocks off my route. There it is. And 
skittish. Right. Eh. Nope. Yes. Okay. Oops. Wrong button. That's what I wanted. Scan ahead for any sign of that horribleness. No gas. Over here. Okay. Quickly get our way into the city. Alright, as quick as we can. Down to the lights. So, here we go. So, anglerfish, overlook. Apparently we needed to give it a different light or some shit? Anglerfish fossil overlook. This will give us a marker of where it is. Right. New light. Stand by. Then the kids were sneaking in by going to the Stepping Stone District, weren't they? Oh, I see. You clever buggers. Okay. I see. Give it a light was a hint for me as a player, wasn't it? Give it a marker, because if I go to the Stepping Stone District, I bet your ass there's a hole in the ceiling. Fuck, I've taken the wrong ent entrance, haven't I? Where is it? Down there? Stepping Stone District. If I'm on the money, then holy shit, this dev is impressive. Under what? 100 meters up. So here's the Stepping Stone District, right? That's where it is. Wait, is this a step? Oh no, it is. Oh, okay. It's much deeper than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. No, wait, am I wrong? Oh shit. Oh no. Was it through there and I'm just too slow? Ah! Did I dally? saw something sealing off. Did you see that? Blind and stupid. And where? I have a marker for my scout. I know. Oh wait, I'm following my ship. No, I am blind and stupid. Fuck, I'm blind and stupid. Chat, I'm blind and stupid. Okay, holy shit, this, this dev is really clever, holy shit. Yeah, that's what they meant, that, that's what the hint was for. Fire your light, follow your marker. Or physically see the light, because it's dark in there. Alright, oh, that's dark. Hmm. Leve. Who, whoever was it when we ended, sorry. Whoever was it when we ended last time is the anglerfish. Rules change. The anglerfish now has to wear a blindfold and do not peek. Why are we changing it? It's too hard if you can't see anything. Aunt Pi says real anglerfish are blind, so you have to wear a blindfold. The rules stand. Rule update. It's okay if younger kids don't wear blindfolds when they're it. The rest of us will still, still wear it for scientific accuracy and to make the game more even. The rest of us, the little fish, line up against one wall. When the anglerfish says go, uh, the little fish sneak across to the other side. If the anglerfish catches you, you're eaten. Last little fish to be caught is the new anglerfish. The old anglerfish gives the new anglerfish the blindfold and becomes the little fish. <laughs> Remember that when you were kids in playgrounds? Line up against a wall, everyone runs across. Hmm. Yeah, poor buggers. Okay. Well, we're here now. How does that help us? What's in here 
that's of note. Ah, stand by. Where does that go? Okay. Stand by. Best be careful. I see this room here. Mallaray, anglerfish study. The long growth protruding from its head is bioluminescent. Perhaps it used this growth to attract play, prey, a lure. An update, Mallaray. Sorry, can you bear with me? Bear with me. <coughs> I need to wet the whistle. Mallaray. Whilst I was here making sketches of the anglerfish, I observed the children I saw earlier playing here again. They've added a rule to their game that incorporates our research. It's wonderful. This anglerfish's digestive tract suggests death by starvation. Visually, the specimen appears to be of the same species as the anglerfish in Dark Bramble. We don't believe it originated from this planet. I'm entirely delighted. It's never too early to appreciate biology. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, they figured out that it's from Dark Bramble, apparently. Strange. Now what? More things to... Yeah, so it was a bit... It was a red herring, red anglerfish. See if there's still stuff to uh, access before the sand blocks it off entirely. Wait. Here. <clears throat> Ghost matter detected. Evading. Okay. So, we can't get down to the high energy thingy. High energy lab trailhead. Eye shrine. Stepping stone. Anglerfish outlook. <coughs> so, we might have to get the next one through. Rush here and then go to the high energy lab. Twin Projects was underway here, utilizing a high-power warp drive that they manufactured at the Black Hole at Brittle Hollow. Shit. Let me get back to the ship. I need to check his computer. Shit, wrong door. Okay. A couple of them were... Well, yeah, we found out that a few of them were eloping off together to the White Hole Station. Shit, is this not where I entered the facility? Indeed, we went to the Ice Shrine, but it reiterated much of what we already knew. Piss. That they have no idea what the eye was for. They were building a shrine to it. Shrine District. Clear? Stand by. Negative. I'll die. There. Gravity cannon this way. Okay. Piss. No. Piss. Fuck. Ass. Oh, shit. Went. Oh. I know, I know, I know. Patched up, patched up. Okay. Fuel depleted. Alright. That might make it that might make it harder to get to the ship. Or even out. 
Yeah, when the sand arrives, I guess. How long until that happens? A while. Okay. Indeed, I may be shit out of luck. Here's the bridge we saw earlier. Can I even make that now? Yep. Shirt. Shirt, if you can throw me down an oxygen tank or something, that'd be appreciated. Or you can just sit there playing your drum, you know, it's fine. You just, you know, keep playing your bloody instrument. Hey, kid. Oh, I get it! I'm suffocating. Ah. And then I was buried in the sand. Bugger. Okay, so this time we'll hurry. I'm pretty sure time freezes when I check the computer, so I should be I should be able to get away with checking what I want to check. Where exactly was the high energy lab reference? We heard that before, didn't we? I think it was when they figured out that the black hole travel was messing with causality. So they were going to run some experiments in the high energy lab. Look, explosion. Is the probe going to come very close to timber? Timber half? No, the other way. Right, let's just go quick. Okay, so quickly check the computer. Here we go. Gravity cannon data. Quantum Moon. So this is the previous stream where we looked at the Quantum Shrine on Brittle Hollow. Church Camp Escape Pod 2. The Sunless City. Sun Station. Ash Twin Towers. We've learned quite a bit. So, the Sun Station. The Sunless City. There's more to explore here. One moment. Okay. Does it mention the lab? Escape pod old settlement, escape pod vessel, black hole forge. Hmm. Ocean depths, that's, uh, that's giant's deep. This must be Br uh, Brittle Hollow, the hanging city, escape pod, black hole forge. Quantum knowledge, quantum signal, quantum grove. Shit, I see no entry for it. Okay. Just gonna, gonna have to work with assumptions then. Stand by. Okay. So, we quickly rush over. I assume that's the quantum moon. Look away and it's... Oh, hang on. Look away and it's gone. Yeah, fuck you. Cheeky bugger. Here we go. Lock on to the Ash Twin. I don't know why I did that. 
Aligning trajectory on our way. Okay. It's very cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's a full of just full of life and full of creativity. This game, it's good. Target the in between. Match velocity. Okay. Oh, they have one of their transportation systems. They do have one. Okay. So let's get in there. Get to the en the high energy lab as quickly as possible. Go 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 go! Quick! I don't have long. Got the suit on. Let's go. Hi there, Ayalo, Ben. Welcome indeed. Sorry, I'm just rushing like a mad hatter. I've got a certain amount of time before this cavern fills up with sand, and then the place that I want to go to is inaccessible. So... Welcome to the Sunless City. Stone District, the High Energy Lab. Here we go. Lights to guide me. Down we go. Let's go quickly. No time. This will be buried very, very soon. So I presume they were running projections to determine exactly what was going on with the black hole, and I'm guessing this is where they came up with the concept the Ash Twin Project, whatever that means. Okay. Don't knock me into the cactus, please. What did I just say? Fuck. Nope. Damn it. Is that a fish fossil? I think it is. Holy shit. Uh, oh no. Oh no, oh no. Am I... How does one get through that? Run up? Sufficient speed? Ow! Do I have to wait for the sand to get there? But surely that will leave me with no time. Maybe that's the idea. It sort of puts you on the clock. Try. You know what, I'm just going to behave. That is when a game developer a game developer says no. Oh wait. An alternative maybe. Ah. No, that's just the way out. I see, it's the base of the Stepping Stone Cave. All the way down. That's what I saw get cover up, remember? Okay. So we just run across the sand? Thank you, Psy Psycho Killers. Thank you. And Grimlock, Kristov, Al Sonata, and Killer, and John. Sorry for missing subs, everybody. I'm so, so, I really apologise. Sorry. I'm just trying to stay immersed and also not read the chat. Apologies. Spoilers and all that. Here we go. Ready?
Christ, if one of these touches me. Are you kidding? Come on, game. <laughs> don't you spike me, don't you? Oh, that's not fair! Oh no, that's really unnerving. I don't like this now. Okay, no, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Okay, I don't want to suffocate in a dark cave. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> right. Where are we? This way? as well. Got to get my 60 second warning soon. Fuck. No time for caution. Uh, might be time for accuracy though. Hang on. There we go. Oxygen. Okay. Is this it? Okay. The symbol of one of their transportation systems. They are warp cores. Mounted into the floor. A black hole and a white hole? Simply demonstrating, or well, testing, I guess, for their warp travel capabilities. This is the machine that controls them? Determines where they go? Records show Nomai arriving at the warp receiver on Brittle Hollow very slightly before departing from Whitehall Station. Rami and I are devising an experiment to test if this is a real phenomenon or a simple machine error. Initial things first. Our experiment setup will first pair a small black hole core with a small white hole core to mimic the setup on the Whitehall Station. Hypothesis. It is possible for an object to exit a white hole before entering the corresponding black hole. In theory, what we want to try to reproduce is a negative amount of time elapsed between something entering the black hole and exiting the white hole at its destination. Reasonable. An update. Our experiment here reproduced the anomaly in arrival and departure times, but Pi is unconvinced it's more than an equipment error. I hope to strengthen the effect to render it visible to unaided eyes. To that end, we've decided to try add and add more energy. I imagine the Sunder City's energy supply should prove sufficient. Of note, Rami, Yarrow requests that we let him know before we reroute energy to the experiment. I'd hate to leave him in the dark. <laughs> 
thousands of years later and their puns remain. All available energy has been rerouted from the city to our experiment. Rami and I are about to run a new test. Hypothesis confirmed. Hypothesis confirmed. I saw it. Pi saw it. Hypothesis confirmed. This is beyond extraordinary. This changes everything. What a beautiful day for the intersection of abstract theory and practical application. You could just say Eureka. So they recreated time travel for the first time. Here. Am I rerouting power? I'm rerouting power. They're humming. Okay. Probe is still flying by the time it escapes from the hole. So they've proved that time travel is possible. Now what do they do with that information? What sin did they commit? when they found out that in order to find the eye of the universe they would have to fire probes off with an incredibly small chance so small that they would never live to see it so small that the the universe would probably well go out all the stars in it would go out before they finally hit their mark did they start fucking with things that they shouldn't have I don't understand these symbols. That's the building I explored before, do you remember? That building, at the very least, is one that's over on the other twin. I, I recognize its layout. See the twir twirly twirly around its edge? Rami, the Southern Observatory is asking if creating a 22 minute interval is possible. That is, to have something arrive 22 minutes before it it's actually sent through the warp. We've learned the negative interval of time between departure and arrival can be increased by adding more energy to the warp core. Problematically, the energy required to extend the interval increases at an exponential rate. Hypothesis, creating a 22 minute long interval is possible but we're currently unable to generate the necessary energy. Rami and I believe it would be necessary to invent a new method of producing energy, a thrilling but enormous undertaking. We would also require advanced warp technology able to handle such energy. We would also likely need an enormous space to fit these proposed new energy and warp technologies together. The only location large enough would be Ash Twin. The energy is currently unavailable, you say. You're a gas pie. My pun was unintended, Rami. So I believe it's you who are an aeroform. So I was right. The Ash Twin project is an attempt to recreate time travel. But it sounds like they were doing it purely on a lark. Why 22 minutes? That's what we're stuck in, a 22 minute time loop. Why? The Southern Observatory is asking, that's why. I'm right. I think I'm right. I think I guessed it correctly. It's because the chances were so small that the probe would land. They broke the fucking universe. Or at least our solar system relative to it. The Ash Twin Project will be one of our biggest undertakings, metaphorically and physically. 
To build it, we need, we need a way to travel quickly between Ash Twin and each location that holds crucial project materials. What if we used warp towers, like the ones we have on Whitehall Station, to connect Ash Twin directly to each critical location? Of note, each tower on Ash Twin will warp to a different planet. My gratitude to those who noted my imprecise language. Yes, the sun is not a planet. I believe this has been sufficiently clarified. Kindly stop reminding me. We can design each tower to visually reflect its warp destination. The giant steep tower, for instance, could resemble a cyclone, and we could model the timber hearth tower after a geyser mountain. Oh. Poke, Root and I can begin work on this immediately in the Black Hole for Forge. This will keep us busy. That's the geyser, isn't it? You remember at the beginning of the stream when I first started playing? When I landed at Timber Hearth? A cyclone. Giant's Deep. The Ash Twin. Yeah, I've been there already. I found the corpse of that dude. I'm not sure what that one is. The Sun. The Sun? I've not seen this tower. Which leaves, I presume, Brittle Hollow? I'm not sure. So each one would bring resources to the Ash Twin project. Okay. Note, this door will need to remain closed for some time. Pi and I are running an experiment based on the extraordinary findings from the White Hole Station. Sunder City, 300 meters that way. Okay. Still a few bits missing to the puzzle. So they were setting up a 22 minute interval on the request of the observatory over at Brittle Hollow. And I presume the Brittle Hollow Observatory made that request because of their probe. But it hasn't been directly link linked, I'm just inferring that. It seems strangely desperate. So what killed them? Why would they need to seal off the Ash Twins? The sand has almost evacuated the Ash Twins, so I can go and investigate more. Can I get back to the ship in time? 300 meters that way? Maybe not. I'm low on time. Uh oh, that was stupid. <laughs> Whoa, okay. We are, we are properly orbiting. <laughs> this game is so cool. The High Energy Lab. Stand by. The Nomai successfully reproduced the temporal anomaly first absorbed, uh, absor uh, observed even, at the White Hole Station. Warped objects appear to arrive before they depart. The Nomai discovered that they could increase the negative time interval between arrival and departure by adding energy to the warp cores. The Nomai wanted to know if a 22 minute negative time interval was possible. They concluded it would require new technology to produce the necessary en energy, as well as an advanced warp core to handle those energies. Ash Twin was proposed as a location for the project. Designs for each of the towers.
towers on Ash Twins Equator. Okay. Each tower warps to a different planet, although many Nomai were quick to note that the sun is not an actual planet. Each tower was designed to visually reflect its warp destination. The towers allowed the Nomai to quickly travel between Ash Twin and all other locations crucial to the Ash Twin project. Okay. So those towers that I was moving between the Ash Twin Project rumours. The central chamber inside Ash Twin was physically sealed off by an immensely thick protective shell. The Nomai plan to construct technology capable of producing a 22 minute negative time interval. Every memory recorded by a Nomai statue is transferred to a corresponding storage unit within Ash Twin. So that wasn't the purpose of it. The purpose, so my previous hypothesis that they were waiting out the end of the universe by transferring their memories. That can't be it either. The statues are just part of normal Nomai operations, I presume. And they just kept them inside there to keep them safe? I guess? Hmm. More to discover. Okay. I'm going to quickly Let's get over. Stand by. There it is. Lock on. Match velocity. Move forward. Go to the towers on the equator. Here they are. So I've already... I see. So they're visually representing each world that they warp to. So what are we looking at here? Brittle Hollow. I see. The crust, the way it's bent. This is Brittle Hollow. And this is the warp core that connects to it. The black hole in the middle. Whoops. Uh, first delivery of the core from the black hole. Fuck, stop it. Okay. Quickly move around. This is Timber Hearth. This is my home. The trees. <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. The sand was pulling me up. Are we free? We're free. We can move. My ship is probably going to get yeeted. What's this? Two twins together? The Ash Twins themselves? Why would they need to warp stuff to here? Unless it's from the Ash Twin. Guessing it is. Wait, what? No. And then this one's spiky. The sun, I see. The transfer, transfer materials to and from the sun. Hello. Shit. I'm in. This is the sun tower. Okay. Some time has passed since I checked in with you, Pi. How are you and Idea progressing with the sun station plans? Presently, my assessment is that our plan will either fail explosively or succeed explosively. Pi, you know I don't find that funny. How curious, Rami thinks I'm a gas, and I don't recall requesting that you monitor this conversation, idea. I don't see what state of matter you are has to do with any of this. I don't recall supporting the sun station's construction, but here we are. Hypothesis, time spent away from the station would be beneficial for you both. I'm immensely interested in testing your hypothesis, Yarrow. 
that, at least, we can agree on. Hmm. Okay, one minute. We want to scout. Hazard. Spikes. Lots of them. Uh, uh, what? Well, piss. Oh, god damn it. How does one get through there, then? <laughs> Unless... Hmm. How does one get through there? I'm just gonna get skewered. I've run out of time. So presumably this would get me to the sun station if I were to activate it somehow. <gasps> An advanced warp core, the necessary power. That's what it requires, I think. Maybe? But where would I insert it? To get all of them working, maybe. Which I might be able to acquire at the Black Hole Station. Uh, not Black Hole Station. Um, Brittle Hollow. The Black Hole Forge, maybe. Well, we're pretty much out of time. Stars exploding all over. Okay. I should go back and talk to Chert. Tell him what I've discovered, see if he has any further leads for me. There we go. Okay, so, ooh, it's coming very close. That's the probe. So, our visit to the twins tells us that, well, it doesn't sound like they were desperate. It m almost sounds like they were really excited to try this time travel technology. And they committed one of their advanced warp drives to making it work. So the Ash Twin project was, by the sounds of it, an attempt to create a 22-minute time loop, which we're stuck in, apparently. They didn't think to switch it off? When it said exponential power requirements, maybe that's exactly what's happening to the sun. Maybe they tied its incoming power to the sun via that station. And initially, now, it's drawing a little bit of power... But then over time it becomes exponential to the point that it's just absorbing everything the sun has. Initiating the project, resetting time, and off we go again. So why wouldn't they... Well, a few more questions. Why did they die? They would be stuck in the loop, same as us. Then again, there was that translation on the wall of the sunless city that said that it would kill us... The lady was expressing that it would kill them all. What does she know? 
Okay. Looking at the time then, folks, it might be a sensible time to wrap this up and pick this up again another time. Dark Bramble seems like a prominent journey that we can make. There's one final thing I can do before I go. One moment. I've got an idea. Might need to be a little bit careful because I think it's going around the sun and we might impact it and therefore explode. Stand by. Two ideas. First idea. I just want to go see Church and ask him if he knows anything more. And the second idea is you'll see. You'll see. Pilot is initiated. We're off. Hmm. Yeah, I like the like kids play uh, like a treehouse look to the ship. It's cool, isn't it? Did any of you ever play a game called Heart of Darkness on the PlayStation? Reminds me of it, like a kid with his like spaceship, which is all wood planks and. Oh no 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 no! Come on! Oh come on! late <sighs> how many times is that chat three times three times I've hit the Sun once on purpose but still three times okay It's a very clever little game. I like it. <laughs> Slate is mighty confused. I wake up and rather than being nervous, I just run straight into the pod. The codes of which I apparently don't even have yet. Launch it and then disappear over the horizon. Slate still cooking the same marshmallow going, what the fuck? Target locked. Autopilot initiated. Back to match velocity. Come on. We're sailing past it right now. Oh, come on, Slate. Slate! Oh, your autopilot is wank, Slate! Oh my god! blue light. Fuck you, blowing up thing. Fuck you, Slate, especially. Ugh. Right. Woo! Okie dokie. Now, Let's take that a little bit more carefully, shall we? We shall now target the planet and match its velocity. There we go. Or, you know, crash back into Timber Hearth. It's all good. travel calmly towards it like so. Now, first things first, let's go and talk to Chert. So there's the distress beacon for their vessel. Look for his... So 
that's the high energy lab. Where's your campfire? There he is. Okay. Hi there, Harry. ZF Harry's in the chat, everybody. Hope you're very well. Stop, stop, stop. There we go. Right. Don't forget the spacesuit. Okay. Hi, chat. Goodness, it's you. I take it your first launch went well, then. Welcome to the Hourglass Twins. Mind the sand now. I have a question for you. Tell me, what can I do for you? I found something. Please do tell. Oh, really? I'm a little disappointed you don't have more dialogue options with the individual Harthians. You'd think it'd be fun to say, oh, I'm stuck in a, you know, I'm stuck in a, a time loop and this is what I figured out and have them go, what the fuck? Okay. Okay. Now then. My next idea is to do this. If I can find it. Switch over to this camera. There it is. Okay, so. One final thing before I bugger off for the evening. I presume this is a model of the solar system. Showing each of the planets as they orbit. Okay. Milore. This planet sometimes, and only sometimes, has a moon. This is also of note. It disappears if no one is watching it. Isn't that a fascinating orbital characteristic? I found your note, Melore. Kind, uh, sorry, kindly count me among this moon's admirers. What is happening when it disappears? I doubt it ceases to exist. Does it move to another location? I believe so. Not only does the moon appear around Brittle Hollow, I can confirm it uh, sometimes orbits Timber Hearth as well. This is my first time encountering a natural satellite with the ability to vanish when not being watched. We should study it, or even better, we should tra we should travel there. Given its reluctance to move whilst consciously observed, it might be a form of macroscopic quantum mechanics. I agree. Our first step would be determining a method to track this phantom moon, so that we can always know where it is. Could this be what they attempted to build here? So. Timber Hearth. Giant's Deep. Dark, uh, so what's it called again? Brittle, no. Thorny, Dark Bramble, that's the one. Okay. What's that? Is this the Quantum Moon? So the Quantum Moon is orbiting uh, yeah, it's orbiting um, Brittle Hollow. I see. I see, and when it's not being observed, it moves. This is the system that they, they made to track it. So if I turn my head, there we go. Ah. Now, here's what I wanted to do. Ignore what the quantum moon is doing. Many of you have already guessed. So. As the planets come into alignment...
You can see what this developer has done, can't you? Oh. Did that one just go a moment ago? It just went supernova while we were watching? Jesus. Clever little game, isn't it? Still need more though. Hang on. I wonder how long they line up for. There's Rybeck. that one then it catches up okay there's dark bramble it's catching up the the, the wind of the damned sand thing nearby is annoying. Come on. Hmm. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. Good point. I won't be able to hear Chert. Ah. Is my plan bo bollocks then? Church's drums won't be included. Ah, that's a shame. I was rather hoping that... Unless it is? Where's Chur? Damn it, Chur! Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Okay, we'll get some of them. I get really far from the solar system, I can hear them all. True. Hmm. There's something wonderfully whimsical about it, isn't it? Just as a concept. Never mind just taking a soundtrack into layers and breaking it up. Esker sitting there in his in his rocking chair as the whippersnappers have taken to the stars with their own song. Because there's Gabbro over there with his goddamn... <laughs> what kind of tune is that, Gabbro? Come on, line up. Indeed. Um, Pan. Although, considering that one of my deaths in this time loop involved my final words being and then they fucked... This is comparatively a very whimsical way to die. These two are lined up. Oh, it's just, it's just the quantum moon, isn't it? For fuck's sake. There you are, quantum moon. I see you. You're weird. Yeah, I hear you. Wanker. Come on, are you gonna line up? Ah, don't you dare line up while I'm getting oxygen, I will scream. My own music that I'm adding to the chorus of just me reeing. we 
go, I think. station over there. That must be the sun station. Exponentially taking energy from the star, killing it. Does it even happen? Am I wasting my time, chat? Does it happen like 10 seconds before the star goes supernova? We'll be sitting here for like 15 minutes. Oh yeah, there's the in yeah the interlope or whatever it's called. Meteor. Oh, 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 here we go. Technically we don't need Dark Bramble indeed because the harmonica is already on Timberheart. Curiously. Okay, you're off. <laughs> We've waited all, all this time and the old man in the wheelchair is off. You're out of sync, Eska. <laughs> Eska, you bellend. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, dear. God damn it, Eska. I wonder if it's like if someone, yeah, someone's gone to, on YouTube and has, has put the mix together. It must have done. Hang on. Fucking, 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 fucking. Fucking, 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 fucking. my attempt to match orbits with the Atle Rock. That didn't go well. Engage autopilot. Stand by. I am here flying towards Dark Bramble right now. Stand by. Okay. Don't smash into Timber Hearth. Ground control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. What's that you're whistling? Uh, sorry, was that you whistling? Probably, or actually, definitely. The other travellers carry instruments so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with the signal scope, you know. Best spot for that is at the North Pole. Great reception. Hmm. Don't go. I mean, anything else you want? <laughs> no. Right! So I'm going to bog off now and go to bed fairly soon. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you for being here. 
Next stream, I'm sure I'll go and investigate Dark Bramble. For there's still much to unravel when it comes to the mystery of what's happening here. But in short, it seems that the ancient aliens of the Nomai managed to get this solar system trapped in a time loop by harnessing the power of this star. Damned all the other races that live here. So, bugger. If anything, the game has made me buy at least one pack of marshmallows, and I'm waiting to buy another bigger pack of marshmallows. So it's not going to be good for my waistline. Right. Thank you again, everyone. So have a lovely evening. Uh, on the bullshittery front, I'm going to start one next Monday. It's going to be Divinity. Hang on. How do you know that it's done? Keep saying blah. Does that mean they're not very nice? Right. Okay. Hmm. She's been sleeping the whole time. Okay, so thank you again. Uh, right, so let me just have a look and see who's doing what. Thank you, Blue Doom, Fierce Beast, and Nebula. Thank you, all of you. Oh, one minute. Let me just pop over to here. Okay. So... ZF, who's playing what? Quite a few members of ZF are currently streaming. Uh, so Harry is doing some Valorant. Joink is doing VR chat. Smeagol is doing some Rust. Yuki is doing some Core Keeper. I don't know what that is. Tom is doing Elden Ring. And Swat Knight is doing Ready or Not. Okay. In which case, let me hand you over to... Eh, I'll hand you over to... I'll hand you over to Swat Knight then. Actually, no, thinking about it, maybe Harry. Harry popped in to say hi. Yeah, I'll hand you over to him then. So it looks like he's just starting his stream. So this is the ever lovable and ever ever happy ZF Harry. I'll leave you in his company and I'm sure he can explain what he's doing. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.